we're talking today with Shannon and with Deb Way, and we're going to be talking about our Hensley Behavioral Health Unit that's located up on our sixth floor, and Shannon's just taken over as director. Mm -hmm. Deb, tell us a little bit about what it is that they are doing upstairs. Uh, well, this remarkable team has pulled together, and we serve a population 55 and greater who are having issues with their cognition, with having mental illness or mental health issues. Mm -hmm. We treat a variety of people, and Shannon, who has been um, an instructor, she's done a lot of different things, she's able to bring her expertise into this team so that we can continue to serve the clients. We have a social worker that does the group therapy. Okay. We have um, a new case manager that's joining us. All of which is real crucial that we have all of these, this team a, a special team. I think that's something that everyone forgets when, when someone goes to nursing school, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, most people think of bedside care, but they think of it, oh, I've got a gallbladder taken out and now I'm going to have a nurse next to taking care of me while I'm in the hospital. But there's so many avenues for mm -hmm. nursing uh, today that, I mean, they're all specialized just as physicians are in so many cases. And this would be one of those cases where you've got to have your nursing team really understand the population they're dealing with. Yeah. Absolutely. Our team is highly specialized up there on 6 South. Yeah. Uh, and, that's, uh, and now that one I know um, I've gone up a few times myself to, to visit uh, yourself and others. Um, and that is a secured area, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So that has to, you have to be keyed in. Someone at the desk has to push a button so that you can gain entry. Yes. So f as much for, um, I mean, that's for the protection of all the folks there because you'd mentioned, Deb, that you have some, perhaps with Alzheimer's or with dementia of some sort. Mm -hmm. so that Either vascular or just the aging aspect of dementia. Mm -hmm. And they get confused and disoriented. And, and it's a way to protect and keep the environment safe. And it's also then when families come in, it's a way to be able to bring families in, set up times for visitation, mm -hmm. and to meet with the physician and the nursing staff right. to go over the, the treatment plans, interventions that we're using. It's, I think it's too, I've noticed when I'm up there, it seems that everything is very structured. Is that a key to success with your team? Absolutely. And in this population, structure is ideal mm -hmm. because if we can keep it as structured as possible, then they feel much safer mm -hmm. along with um, their med management, their staff, and the, the, the team that we have. And then if we can kind of move that along whenever they, their next stage, whether it's home, placement or wherever they're going mm -hmm. and we can teach that to the family or the next stage um, the Make nursing sure. home assisted sure. living then if they can keep that the same yeah then they'll be much better so off. so breakfast at the same time yes. lunch all your mm -hmm. meals at the same time mm -hmm. and and it, well get I'm gonna back up even somebody to get you up in the morning mm -hmm. and get you ready activities. for the day mm -hmm. activities everything Group. in a yeah mm -hmm. everything patterned along in a in a real concise manner so that um, you know if it's 10 o'clock you could probably set your watch it's going to be activity time <laughs> right <so. laughs> and but it's tailor-made you were talking about a case manager and um, sometimes I know when I've talked with folks that have tuned into the show and they'll have questions I always try and see my role here as taking uh, and putting everything into layman's terms so that people truly understand what we're talking about. So a case manager is actually tailoring the plan for the individual because everyone's different. Even though the whole day is structured, it's going to be different for each person based on what the case manager puts together and the doctor recommends. Is that a pretty clear mm -hmm. analysis, mm -hmm. I think? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And even, in, even more so in our population, because based on their diagnosis, where mm -hmm. we may have dementia or Alzheimer's or bipolar patients, depending on where their um, discharge placement might be, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that everything is tailor-made to them. But each floor is going to have their own 
person that does that for them sure. but we're going to have that as well right and so interdisciplinary is going to come into play whether it's social work case management nursing doctor our director mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so, so is your team then um you have your own social worker yes that deals solely mm -hmm. with the folks that you're mm -hmm. taking care of yes okay that's wonderful mm -hmm. that continuity of care is great and like you say the same faces at the mm -hmm. same time each day um, you know we even employ people that just work on the weekends so we're able to keep our structure and our program going mm -hmm. seven days a week mm -hmm. and the night shift nurses do tremendous interventional work with oh, they the I'm sure. yes yeah with if with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. with sundowners and that mm -hmm. type of thing you've got uh, you know, while the rest of us are going to sleep, the, some of our folks are going, oh, it's time to get up, and, and uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. their old circadian rhythms are way out of whack, and they're ready mm -hmm. to enjoy the evening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> it is, it, it would be a, a time, yes, with your night staff, I'm sure, to do a lot of interventional work. Mm -hmm. So what else goes on up there? Well, we, with uh, Bill House, he's our case coordinator, admissions coordinator kind of rolled into one. Mm -hmm. He can go anywhere within the house or to some of the local nursing homes. He could do intakes or screens there to see if the individual would qualify, okay. report back to the nurse, the charge nurse, because her role then would be to take that information, present it to the physician, and if they agree with admission, then we can bring someone in. He'll do a lot of work like that within the hospital, too, and some down in ER, which will help us partner better with the ED department. So mm -hmm. as they identify concerns, right. we'll be able to assist. Okay. Okay. I was trying to get a whole kind of a whole mm -hmm. spectrum of how does this work. Now, somebody that would be at a, a nursing home, I'm trying to think of an example of what Typically, someone's at the nursing home and become behavioral yes. issues. Right. Yeah. Yes. I mean, oh, this is not uncommon where they might be acting out. Mm -hmm. um, they might have. Um, they might be acting out towards another resident, staff members, um, and it could be various reasons. It could be actually physical or just screaming or just numerous things. Mm -hmm. So we might get a call saying that we need a consult so we tell them you know what we need mm -hmm. and it's always uh, usually that they go through our emergency department because we need to rule out anything medical right so right. firstly that's that's the thing that we need to do and there's there's a list of criteria mm -hmm. and they're almost all of the nursing homes around here even the outlying ones the ones you know in ash flat hardy Harrison, those are going to know, they, they know that we're going to need to rule out anything medical first. Right. And if um, they come through our emergency department after those things are ruled out, and we do realize it's still something behavioral, mm -hmm. and it's something that our doctors are, think that they meet our criteria for, then we go ahead and bring them up after our nurse has gone down to the emergency room and looked at them. I, okay. We still right. do. So there's still a screening we process We still go there down and too. look at them anyway. Yeah. But yeah. more than likely, it's after they've gone through that rigorous thing and we've already talked to the nursing home and we've seen that, that they meet our criteria, it's, mm -hmm. it's something that You're we bring You're trying to rule up. out medication uh, interaction right. or something that's brought the behavior Right, and we're, we're trying to rule out the fact that they've got a medical problem such as pneumonia or mm -hmm. um, dehydration or any other sort of infection that might might put them into those sorts of behaviors mm -hmm. that they might need a medical floor first. Oh, and then be brought up. Right. And then okay. possibly be brought okay. to our floor. Okay. So you're always, of course, the, the main thing is the, the best care for the patient. Right. And the correct care for the patient. And But if they, you know, are a detriment to themselves or others, you certainly have to. Yes. You know. And then, of course, we're going to weigh on that first. Um, if if it's still pneumonia or if it's still dehydration or if it's still a urinary tract infection is it something that we can treat first in the er for a little bit give them some antibiotics but we still need to keep them safe mm -hmm. and we need to bring them up to the sixth floor then that's also something that we run by the physicians okay. and then go ahead and bring them up 
Okay, a lot of so pressure that we can keep on, the them safe. on the physicians to make these decisions mm -hmm. as well. And they work very closely with our nurses because <laughs> our nurses are the ones that are going to be taking care of them, <laughs> and they know what the behaviors are like. Oh, okay, okay. So they understand. Mm -hmm. They understand by being trained a little bit better, perhaps, than the physicians do. Even sometimes, do, yes, yeah. I think so. And yeah. I think the fact that, like I said, the highly trained team that we have, and you know, this that they work so well with the physicians and that they've been doing it for so many years. years right. Mm -hmm. We need to take just a short break. Don't go away, we'll be right back and we'll talk some more about the Hemsley Behavioral Health Unit that's located on the sixth floor at Baxter Regional Medical Center. Mm -hmm. 